Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Am I audible to everyone? Please, men, please write down in the uh, op questions or the chat option, which is available on your right side of the panel. Is my audio proper? Is my video is absolute? OK, so we will start our session by in three, four minutes. We are waiting few more people to join the session and then we will start. And meanwhile, if you have any qu query or the question for me, which we can discuss at this point in time, you can write in the question panel. Can we start the session now? All right. So good, good afternoon, everyone. And I welcome you all to this session. Last minute strategy to beat JE Main 10 2020. Winter is here. And so the JE Main January session is about to come. What is the only 10 days are left for the exam? How to make most out of these 10 days? What are the chapters that I need to put more focus on? How to control my pounding heart? These are some of the questions which usually come during this period of time, right? So my, my name is Ruhi Dalhan, and I would like to address these few of these questions in, through this session. To start with, let me introduce myself. I am a postgraduate with physics. I am a postgraduate with physics and have major subjects which were very close to the hearts of Stephen Hawking and Albert Einstein. That is general theory of relativity and astrophysics. I am an assessment expert and it's been eight years for me in the industry. My work required me to collaborate with industry experts, teachers, students who are preparing for JE Main, JE Advanced, NEET, Olympiads and many such competitive examinations. With all the research and experience that I, I could able to gather, I would like to share a few of my insights through this session. So let's start. Before starting, let's understand the platform that we are using. On your right, you can find two options for you. One is raise hand. You can click it. It will give me a highlight and I can provide you audio control if time permits. You can ask your query there. Second is the questions panel where you can write any question which comes into your mind when we are doing the session. I'll try to collect all the questions and answer the query. But in case we could not, don't worry. At the end of the session, in a day's time, you will get a mail from our side having all the questions and answers which has been asked in the session. J preparation in last 10 days. Very critical question, right? Only 10 days left. 6 January, J main first session of 2020 would be happen. So what are the three points? So I have three precise points for you to take as a takeaway for you, which will help you in these last 10 days to prepare better. The three are strategy. Secret ingredient. Wait for this section. This will give you very helpful in insights and information regarding how you can attempt your JE main exam smartly. Beat exam pressure. I know this is a little has ignorance with it, but it is very important to address at this point in time. 
So let's discuss these three points in detail when we are going ahead. 3R strategy. So I would like to ask one question here. What is the main important point and take and the exercise that we need to do during this time when you are hitting the exam in next 10 days? What should be the strategy? Any answer? What should I do in last these 10 days? What is required at RN to perform? Should I pick a new concept? Yes, I need interactivity. Keep writing. Keep writing in the questions box. I'm reading all your answers. So what is important to do at this point in time when I'm only left with 10 days to the exam? Right. I can see a few of the answers are coming from the side, which is revision, revision of syllabus. Okay, self-confidence, practice. Right, right. Attempt previous year papers. Oh, many of you are aware that what you should do. So with this, I would say, yes, very important two points which I could able to get from here is revision and practice. This is the key points which you need to touch upon when you are only 10 days left with the main exam. So let's see what this R, 3 R strategy says to us. Read, what to read? The concepts that you have already learned the concepts which you have already through, read those concepts. This is not the right time to pick a new concept. This is not the right time to pick a new topic. Rather, this is a very important time for you to solidify what you have learned so far. So read the topics, read the chapters, read the concepts that you have learned. Reflect. So after reading, what is important? what you have learned do you really know that let's find out by reflecting them performing some exercises so after reading the concepts do practice do exercises related to the concepts and then revision this concludes the cycle once you read once you reflect on the concept based questions now you need to revise as for the pattern so what is the main ingredient of revision exercise? That is practice, practice, practice. The more practice you do at this point in time will make you confident, will make you exam ready. My suggestion for you would be do at least one mock test every day on the stipulated time, which is three hours and exact pattern, which is required and would be expected for J main January session. Secret ingredient, yeah. So for with that, we could able to cover first section of the webinar or this session that was three R strategy. What was that? Read, reflect and revise. More and more practice is required when you, along with the concept uh, revision or the reading which you have already learned. No good time to pick a new concept or a topic. Now the next section of the session is secret ingredient. Okay, so can you all guess what it can be? What is important when you're performing, when you're going to give such a competitive exam like JE main, what is the important parameters which you need to take care when giving this exam? Can I get some responses from you all? What is the important factor of the exam? Right, time management. Good, smartly attempt. Yes, quick and very good, quick answers, right. So you guys are already learned, you guys are already aware that what is required to perform the JE main exam. So what is important? The exam is only three hours long and have 75 questions in total. 
and it covers the whole syllabus of around 90 chapters. How to take care, how to perform your exam smartly, how you can save time for the difficult questions, how quickly you can reach to the correct option is something, the secret ingredient which you all need to know when you are in the last 10 days and preparing at the last leg of this exam. So let's see what I have for you. Attempt exams smartly. So what we have, we have, I have few things for you to tell you that how smartly you can attempt your JE main exam so that you can save time and respond, give answers quickly. Okay, the second is very important point, which is easily fetch 70 to 75 marks. Wow, this is something really nice, right? So at this point, in this particular part of the session, we would able to know that where and how you can, how, why I'm saying that easily fetch 70 to 75 marks that we will able to see in this particular session. So let's start and discuss these points in details. Attempt exams smartly. Tip one, dimensional analysis. So what, what two things that we are addressing through this session? Smartly answer that requires to save time and reach to the quick uh, correct answer very quickly. So let's see what different tips do we have. Tip one is dimensional analysis. How do we do that? This is a particular topic that we learn in grade 11, right? How this is relevant to in relation to attempting JE main. So let's see with the help of an example. It's a very typical example of a question which usually come in the exam where it says, find the velocity of an electromagnetic field with some equation and the field values are given as B and E and then there are a few options. So what is required in this question? Can you, can you guess? Can you tell me? We require to find velocity's relation in res with respect to magnetic field B, magnet electric field E. That means one, a relationship has to be set between different physical quantities. And when we are dealing with physical quantities, dimensional analysis comes very handy. It's one of the kind of example you can apply in many of such questions. So let's see uh, how to do that. So what is a typical way of attempting this question? You will start reading this elect some the equation which is given as an electromagnetic field in the question, right? You will start treating it with putting formulas, deriving the equation in such a way that you find velocity in terms of B and E. And then also you are not very sure at the end because it needs a lot of mathematics, a lot of steps to be involved. So how in quicker way we can reach to the correct sure short answer. So let's see how we can, I can vouch that you can do this question in two steps. So let's see how you can do that. So I'm saying here that using dimensional analysis will ease your life at this such a question. So how you can do that? So we have B magnetic field. You can write the dimensions of magnetic field, which is m t to the power minus two, a to the power minus one. Then you write the dimensions of electric field, which is m l t to the power minus three, a to the power minus one. And now look at the options very carefully what two different type of things or the operation it needs to find the ratio of E by B and B by E. So the, when you do B by E, the dimensions would be L minus one and T. And when you operate E by B, the dimensions would be L T to the power minus one. Which dimension is close? I not close. Which dimension is exactly same as of velocity? Which should be the right option? Now, can you, any one of you can guess? Yes, I'm looking for your responses in the question section. With just these two steps, you have figured out the correct option, which is that. Right, Shivam. It is C. Right, Harshita and Keshav. Good. So the C option, you can easily see that the C option is the right in this manner. And how you do it? Only in two steps. Need not to go and do perform many steps, right? So let's see what is next. 
tip to rely on units right so when you're doing j main exam relying on working with units is something really uh, i would say it's a friend of students who are going to attempt for j main how relying on units is helpful in solving a question in no time and reaching to the right answer. Let's see with an example. So let's say we have some question, it can be around anything, and then you need to find some physical quantity like velocity. In, in this example, it is velocity, it can be magnetic field, it can be electric field, it can be anything, it can be temperature as well. So for this particular question, you can easily find the correct answer by looking at the options and what are these you can see from the options which unit which options unit is exactly the unit of velocity is it b is it c or a or option d which option by just looking at the units is correct option Yes, any one of you? It's A, right. Just by looking at the units, you found that option A is the correct answer for such a question. I need not to solve complete solution. I need not to go into solving questions by using different formats and concepts. I just need to look at the option to find the correct option. So let's see what I have next for you. Another question when the units will help you to find the right answer. So some question, let's say it is on heat or thermodynamics and ask you to find the correct temperature. So just look at the options. So let's see, I'm, I'm not interested in solving the complete question. Instead, I first like to find the correct answer by looking at the options. So when you look at the options out of what is the odd thing which you can uh, figure out from the, the, the options which is given on your screen. Can you find odd in these options? What is not really very uniform or expected? Anything? Can I get some answer or responses from you all? What is different? What is very peculiar in these four options? Can you see that out of four options, three options are on degrees Celsius and only one option is on Kelvin, right? So which says it's standing out. Straight away, take it out of the options. Uh, straight away, take it out of the the kitty where you are figuring out which one is the correct option take it out from that zone now look at the numerals in the options and see 35 is a numeral which is repeating in the options that means the probability to be 35 degree to be the correct option is more and this is applicable to 90 percent of the questions so I would say this tip will really be helpful when you a little bit dicey and doubting your answer. This sort of technique by treating the options will help you to reach out to the correct option. Next tip for you I have is put known values. This particular tip comes handy when you are working with trigonometric ratios, trigonometric equations. Let's see how. So I have a question for you where few trigonometric ratios are designed to, to make one complex uh, looking trigonometric equation. And we all know that trigonometric, solving trigonometric equation is tedious, involves a lot of formulas and attention. It needs us to be really on, uh, on the strike when we are, it should be very correct. You cannot just uh, it doesn't have the option for you to make any silly mistake, right? So you need to be very particular when you are solving trigonometric equations. So for such a very important and very prominent sort of question, which is the part of JE main, I have a tip for you. What you can do, just assume the angles involved are equal and equal to the known angle. 
so known ang by known angle it means 0 degree 30 degree 45 degree 60 degree and 90 degree these are the angles for which you know the values of different trigonometric ratios so let's see how we can solve this so for this particular question i have assumed that x equal to y equal to 45 degree now i put the relevant the corresponding value of the trigonometric ratios in the equation and i reach out to the uh, to the correct option to the correct answer which is 1 and hence the correct option is d so so can you see that i have reduced the complete solution of this trigonometric equation to only two steps i just need to first assume one single angle put in the equation find the correct option by doing a little bit of algebraic operations right very easy i am sure that you are finding it really useful for your je main so what we have next tip 4 reverse technique what is that finding a solution is a typical way of doing that right you start with the question do some operations reach out to the answer how we can reverse it and find and make it really quick quick to make to find the correct answer so let's see with an example so this is an equation again i would say an equation which is a uh, very common which you can see in je main exam or similar exams so we have a very complex quadratic equation which needs a lot of operations to perform to reach out to the correct answer so i so what you can do in the reverse technique in the reverse technique what we do so you have solutions in the options so in the reverse technique what you need to do put the options one by one in equation given in the question to satisfy the equation how can we do that let's see in a more better manner so just pick an option a which is x equal to 1 put this in the equation which is given in the question and find the answer if x equal to 1 satisfy the equation given in the question then you it is the correct option if it won't satisfy the equation moves to the next option and this way by using the reverse technique you can easily find the correct answer need not to perform a whole lot of algebraic uh, formulas and concepts to find the right answer any question so far all the four techniques are clear for all of you Do you have any question for me? You can write in the question panel, or you can chat with me. We'll take. I'll. I'll wait for a minute. If I could have any, I could get any question. Then I will move further. Okay. So let's move further. the next step which is ruling out the incorrect option hmm this is really handy when you work with chemistry section this particular tip is more applicable to the chemistry section where maximum questions come on prior properties or the uh, uh, or the compounds relationship or the reactions which you already read right so just ruling out the incorrect option will take you lead you to the right answer so let's see and let's understand using one example so we have one example let's read out this question both lithium and magnesium display several similar properties due to the diagonal relationship however the one which is incorrect is so what question asks for this says that lithium and magnesium which are two different elements display similar properties now we need to find there are few properties which is written in the options we need to find the incorrect option out of four options which is given in the question how can we do that just right away use the ruling out the incorrect option that means 
just go for the options which are actual properties of lithium and magnesium rule out that option and reach to the right answer so let's see option a says both form nitrites yes it is correct for lithium and magnesium lithium forms li3n and magnesium forms mg3n2 so that means yes it is right option b says nitrates of both lithium and magnesium yield no2 and o2 on heating this is again right we know that nitrates of these two elements decompose to give out nitro no2 and no2 on heating option d says both form soluble bicarbonates missed so we know that lithium and magnesium both of these elements belongs to group 1 and group 1 bicarbonates exist only in solution form that means in the soluble soluble bicarbonates missed so again d is the correct property for both of these elements now we are left with which option c right so in this particular case in this particular question option c is correct because this is not the property display by both the elements which is which are lithium and magnesium so we could able to read to the right answer in no time right next tip for you find nth term oh the beautiful tip that i would say this particular tip covers a whole chapter and what is that is the sequence and series do you guys know that even in sequence and series only three type of questions are asked in the question in the paper and that is to find the nth term to find the sum of n terms to find the product of n term that is all these three categories only and this particular tip is actually applicable for all these three categories and you can find the answer in no time in only two or three steps you can easily find the right option let's see how so i have a question here for you what is given in the question a series tn and we need to find the nth term now the option has the nth term we need to figure out which option is actually the correct nth term for the series how you can do that in a proper typical solution manner you need to perform a lot of things a lot of formulas to reach out to the final answer and you can look at the options they are very complex this means the journey would not be very easy you need to do a lot of things you need to apply a lot of formulas to reach out to this complex looking solution so let's i have a very quick easy way of doing uh, solving this particular kind of question let's see how it's the nth term just assume some value to n and usually uh, the answer you can find the right answer by just assuming n equal to 1 2 or 3 maximum 3 i would not say it go beyond 3 uh, usually it comes up to 3 so so let's start with n equal to 1 so when n equal to 1 what is the first term given in the series that is 1 right so we will put n equal to 1 in each of the option to find for which particular option we are getting this exactly same to the term 1 which we can see from the series itself so when you put 1 in option a we found 0 as the answer in option b we got 1 in c it is some fraction in d in another fraction so directly we can see that option b is the correct answer for this question let's take another example on this particular tip uh why i want why i wish to have two different questions for the same tip is because of the importance uh, majorly on because of these two questions the, these two variety of different questions from the same chapter will cover complete um, uh, complete uh, type of question which are asked from this particular chapter in the je main so let's see this question what this question asked for find sum of n natural numbers okay so we so a question asks us to find sum of n natural numbers 
a, a pretty easy series the question that i have but maybe this increase the complexity in uh, j main but be assured that by using this tip you can uh, find answer to any of the complex question coming from this chapter so we will apply the same formula so what we are doing we'll put n equal to 1 and when n equal to 1 the sum of one natural number is 1 we can see directly from the series and uh, by put the value of n in different options what we found a and d are not matching with the answer are not matching with the required answer so we'll just rule them out ruling the incorrect option from the given options using the same tip again now the interestingly the option b and c both are giving the right answer oops it's a fact we reach to a problem area how to find which option is correct b or c so what we'll do we'll apply n equal to 2 in these two options and see which option is giving the right answer right so for n equal to 2 sum of two natural numbers should be 3 and by just putting n equal to 2 we are getting that option b is giving me that right answer so option b is the correct option for this question now very important tip of j main never leave numeric entry type questions why why i am saying that never leave numeric entry type questions anybody can i get any response from you all show some interactivity let's make this session more interactive why why i am saying that you should not leave numeric entry type questions right 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 so you all are aware of the pattern of the exam this year in 2020 we are expecting numeric entry not expecting this is this is going to come numeric entry type question would be part of the je main paper and for this type of question there is no negative marking that means uh and upper hand surely attempt these questions they will not deduct your marks if they won't give you zero uh, if they won't give you four marks uh, they won't give you any negative mark so follow so always attempt numeric entry type questions and along with this one more tip for you thoroughly go through with the question paper instructions j NTA has not launched mock test completely with the instructions which are expected in January session. So this would be the first time for all of us to get to uh, final final uh, looking paper. So it's better that you go through completely with the test instructions. Okay. So similar to that, we have many tips and tricks available on our blog section you can go and get the information relevant for your JE main uh, January 2020. All right. So with this, we have seen, we have covered the first seg segment of the secret ingredient, which is how you can attempt smartly the exam by saving time and quickly reaching to the answer. Now let's see and look at this very important part of the part segment is easily fetch 70-75 mark, easily fetch how you can do that if i get that i could able to achieve my je main good score how you can do that so in this particular section i'm going to share a secret that there are few chapters in your syllabus uh, where the concepts are not very difficult but they cover approximately 18 to 20 questions of your 75 questions that means easy grab of 70 to 75 marks so let's see which are those chapters start with physics modern physics and optics oh these are the most important topics of the of the subject why i'm saying they're easily fetchable why modern physics is a chapter which in itself in alone it carries uh, so i would share my my study 
that uh, in last seven years, the last seven years analysis says that on an average, you will find you will get, we have got five questions on modern physics. That means the range of questions coming from modern physics is four to six from 20, 30 questions of physics at that uh, with this, uh, the old pattern. So you can see that modern physics in itself carries a good num good portion of physics. So this is very important to cover. If you complete this chapter, you could able to attempt those five or six questions in the exam. First thing. Second thing, the questions on modern physics are not very difficult because they come directly on concepts. So just go through with the concept. Sorry, just go through with the concept and you would be able to reach uh, the uh, to uh, to uh, to pocket these six questions which are coming from the modern physics. Uh, so the important topics the which are very frequently asked topics from this particular chapter are radioactivity, dual nature of matter, X-ray, atomic structure, uh, photoelectric effect, nuclear fusion. These are few uh, very important topics of this chapter. Now let's see why optics is easily fetchable uh, of chapter. Again, a very important chapter carries good portion of the physics uh, su uh, section subject. Um, in optics, uh, you, the questions are directly, first the questions are directly on the concept, okay? They are not very difficult. They increase the difficulty by combining different concepts. They, the, the questions are usually combined reflection with refraction, but the con they are only on concept. So if you know the concept, you can easily get the final answer. And usually the answers are one liners. So you need not to perform a lot of calculation in reaching to the final answer. So these two chapters are the easily fetch uh, chapters category in physics. Let's see in chemistry. In chemistry, we have two chapters, the major which take major weightage and portion of the chemistry subject that is chemical bonding, PDF block elements. So these two chapters are again very important from chemistry point of view. Chemical bonding, bonding is most important topic. It covers, it has, uh, it, the number of questions are very high from this particular chapter. The questions are directly on concepts and uh, just by putting uh, concepts of hybridization and molecular orbital theory, you can directly find out the answer. So that is why the chemical bonding is easily fit chapter. Th second is the PDF block elements. Uh, in this, um, hmm, a, 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 an important part for, you, for all of you to have as a takeaway for PDF block elements chapter is that if you have a list of uh, reactions related to the elements or the properties or the behavior the elements uh, show with respect to the group they belong to, uh, with respect to the period they belong to, it will help you to uh, find the final answer. So for PDF block elements, if you have not yet created that list of um, uh, list of reactions, list of uh, the the list of uh, uh, behavior of the elements, I would suggest you very strongly prepare that, go through with that. That would be enough for you to answer chemical bonding and PDF block elements. So. Uh, for chemistry section, I would again stress that prepare notes on chemical behaviors, reactions, that those would helpful for you in uh, doing the chemistry section very well. Third is the mathematics. And in mathematics, we have three chapters, sequence and series, matrices and determinants, coordinate geometry. Okay. So uh, we have already seen sequence and series. Uh, so first, uh, all of these three chapters are very important. They cover good. Uh, they cover good portion from the mathematics subject. Secondly, we have seen in sequence and series when we were talking in the tips part. The you remember the tip where uh, we study. We we have we discuss about for nth term, right? So for from that uh, discussion, you can figure out in sequence and series, we, uh, we get only two, three type of questions. Find the nth term, find the sum of n, natural, uh, n numbers, uh, n terms, and product of n terms. These 
three type of questions are majorly asked in sequence and series and we already have associated tip to solve these questions so that makes this particular chapter easy to fetch marks second is matrices and determinants oh why i'm saying it is easy when it involves a lot of uh, steps to perform any uh, to find the final answer why i'm saying it is, that it is easy because this chapter uh, the concept of this chapter is not difficult and secondly the questions which are asked related to this chapter are all directly on the formulas so that is the beauty of this chapter you just need to be attentive while uh, solving the questions related to this chapter because uh, on the only ten, uh, the the tendency to uh, to lose marks in this particular chapter is the silly mistake so you need to take care of your silly mistakes if you perform the solution in attentive manner you can easily find the final answer that can help you in uh, bagging all the marks associated with the questions third is the coordinate geometry one rule for you plot what so two things are given in the question equations and points plot the rough graph for the equation put points in the equation and you will be able to see the final answer so so whatever question comes into coordinate geometry whichever equation is given to you plot make a rough plot put the points in the graph and related to the question find the answer directly so these are the seven chapters uh, for which around 18 to 20 questions comes in the exam out of 75 questions and they will give you good marks if you and why they are easy because their concepts are easy questions that are asked in the uh, in the chap uh, in the exam are easy they are directly on the concepts and third they are easily fetchable you just go fetch the marks if you are prepared with the read the already learned concept the the point that we have uh, already discussed in the 3 hour strategy read the concept read 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 reflect and revise revision is very important go and practice every day at least attempt one mock test in 3 hours that is very important just by just not knowing just uh, by just knowing concept you will not be able to capture all the marks in the paper if you could not perform in 3 hours so both of these are very important uh, attempt all the questions correctly in 3 hours is something which will take you to higher ranks in je main so take the keep this balance alive and read 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 practice 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 that is all you need in last 10 days let's move on and see oh i have a bonus tip for you and what is that in the conic section wow this is a chapter where usually uh, uh, usually one question at least one question comes uh, one or two question comes in the paper and the question is around there is some equation given in the question Uh, equation which is very difficult to look like it which is very complex uh, seems to uh, and they ask whether the graph will give you a shape of circle ellipse parabola hyperbola right so this is a very prominent question in je main usually come in every year right so how to do that just learn this table find relationship b square minus 4ac with respect to 0 learn well, put this fact which is given in front of you on the screen and you will find whether the shape is circle or ellipse or parabola or hyperbola easy right just you need to find the relationship of b square minus 4ac with respect to 0 to find the shape okay so with this we have covered our previous section which was around how smartly you can attempt paper how smartly you can prepare for the paper so what we have seen we have figure out seven important tips out of those uh, very important i would not say very all of them were very important but one major tip was that never leave numeric entry type question 
and the second part of it was uh, the four the seven chapters uh, which will which can easily fetch us good marks in the paper uh, 70 to 75 marks is not bad to get in JE main because every mark counts uh, to raise your uh, raise your rank right so fetch that so just just prepare those chapters first be ready be confident on those chapters so that you secure those marks and then move further for the other concepts so uh, that was all in the uh, attempt smartly uh, when we have covered that section any question so far if you have any question please ask me on the question segment i'm looking at the questions that you're sending me yes please ask ask in the question segment do you have any questions so far or should i start asking you questions okay so ayanshu is asking that what will be a good score all right <laughs> a very tricky question to ask ayanshu at this point um, last time the person so basically ranks depend on the uh, on the percentile so it totally depends that how good the other persons are doing uh, 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 bet, uh, doing better than you so that would be difficult to say but yes around uh, i would say around 200 range of you can say 1 195 to 230 or 40 can can have a good rank at least uh, I cannot say that uh, which would be good for JE Advance, but yes, that will uh, land you at a good place. Yes. Any other question? Oh, Keshav is already okay. So Keshav is giving you an idea from uh, his uh, knowledge that he's saying that 200 to 220 is uh, a good score or 220 to 240. Yeah. Any other question that you have? Are you all clear that what kind of pattern you guys are? going to have in the JE main exam. Any question around that? Okay, with that we shall move further. Uh, beat exam pressure. Uh, so yeah, at this, at this slide, many of you may think that it is not important for me when I uh, when I'm more concerned that uh, which chapter I should pick, which topic I should do, uh, how should I uh, do good in the exam. The exam pressure is not very uh, cool thing to discuss right now. But no, this is not right. You should not ignore the exam pressure. Why I am saying that? Because if the pressure reaches to a limit, uh, there can be a blackout. You, you may not, uh, if you your exam pressure builds up, and you, you won't control it on time, then it may happen that you're writing the exam, you know the concept, but nothing comes in your mind. And that state would be very, very helpless and difficult situation, which nobody wants to have in their exam, right? So controlling exam pressure at the right time is very important. And I do not have much things for you to take care. It's just that, boost brain health which which organ at this this pressurized period of your uh, period of your life when you are preparing for such a competitive exam so such a pressurized exam where uh, close to 12 lakh students are participating which organ is most exhausted is it your hands is it your eyes no this is your brain brain is most exhaustive at this point in time so you need to take good care of your brain otherwise you will not be able to attempt your test in a proper manner so take care of your brain and how how you can help your brain to be healthy have you read have you heard that proverb that healthy brain sits healthy mind sits in a healthy body so your body health is very important and for that, eat healthy. Avoid junk food. Do not go on junk. Be hydrated. Drink water. At least three to four liters in a day. 
add as many as colors you can in your food how you can do that add food fruits add vegetables the more colors you have in your platter that means you are more nutritious sleep well do you you guys know when brain actually takes care of itself he gen regenerates the cells or relax it's when you sleep so when you sleep your brain doesn't sleep it just makes it prepare for the next day so it is very important whatever you are putting in your brain has to be stored in a proper manner so for that brain needs relaxation if you keep on putting information 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 on brain there would be a point where brain stops working and says okay no more information i am good what i have so it's better give it some time give it some time to relax so that it can revive for the next day and you can add more information into it third a timely break it is very important so after every 2 hours take 10 minutes or 15 minutes break and whenever your body and brain asks you to take a break do take break because when your body is saying you to take break you should not push it otherwise it will not work as per its efficiency so whenever you just listen to your brain just listen to your body if it says that i need break give it a break and it deserve that break right okay i'm having few questions uh, so priya is asking that how many hours should i study in these days okay uh, priya how uh, what you think about it so we have 24 hours should we study for 24 hours at least after uh, hearing what i'm saying or discussing on this particular slide do you think we should study for 24 hours no 24 hours minus minus 8 hours which includes your sleep and some refreshment is something yes so priya is saying 8 to 8 to 10 hours yes that is sufficient for you but uh, the learning for how many hours it doesn't matter what matters for how many hours you are you are studying and that study is actually focus study and for last 10 days you cannot divide that hours so in last 10 days i would say every day practice on real type mock test put take test in 3 hours on 75 questions the more and more practice you do the more and more you will be exam ready and one more tip here for you guys that practice on previous year papers that will make you exam ready we saw that uh, the conic section we have seen that coordinate geometry we have seen that chem chemistry all the questions the concepts are around the same the questions are only change around maybe adding another equation maybe giving a different element but the concept is same so practice not only on the exact mock test rather i would also suggest practice on the last previous year papers okay so with this let's move on to the next section which is self confidence uh, which is very important why uh, do you believe that if the self confidence if the isro team was not confident on themselves they could able to achieve mission mangal no right a very uh, very much uh, known fact or the the information which uh, it was a news which everyone was talking around during that time without their self confidence we could not able to achieve that mission mangal so keep believing yourself whatever you have learned you are perfect you know that and what is required for that to make it solid concept reading is important read 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 what you have learned reflect and revise by putting more and more practice both three of these pillars will help you to keep you confident on the concept which will help you further in performing good in the exam so these points are very important which you need to take care and one more thing which i want to share with you as a tip i could not share it at the time when we were discussing about the topics is go with ncert specially for chemistry ncert is bible for chemistry so when you are going to prepare for chemistry je main 
do read go through with ncert by heart all the questions are 80 85% of the chemistry section is on concept they directly you can easily do them if you know your ncert very well so it's a additional tip for you do try this okay so with this i am done with my session if you have any question please ask me i am all available for you okay we have question that how do i manage time between the subjects in je main exam good good question so um, first harshita i would say that when you are practicing when you are deciding your schedule uh, 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 divide it in such a manner that the mock test that you uh, you keep your time for the mock test and when you are dividing it keep 3 hours for one mock test and if you are attempting two Uh, two tests then keep 6 hours and there should be 2 hours gap when you are doing two tests in a day it should not be back to back because once you perform one test there will be some understanding for you there will be some learning for you which you need to read remember that 3 hour strategy read whatever is the inference you could able to figure out from first attempt read the concept again and then do the second uh, second test and at this point in time dividing time between the subjects is not the ideal way i would suggest uh, rather suggest that practice on the test uh, understand how you are performing uh, figure out which chapters or which subject seems a bit difficult but again do not go for learning any new chapter do not go for learning a new topic rather learn the topics which you have covered if you are not able to score well in the test which you are uh, doing as a mock test then go learn that concept again reflect by practicing more come back and do the practice on the mock test uh, next question that we have which test series or mock test would you suggest uh so kesha we have we already have few test which are according to the latest pattern uh with 3 hours and 75 question single correct and numeric type question and they are uh, they are uh, good and uh, stamped by many of the industry experts you can take that uh, and there are many uh, 10 tests are already available they are on je main pattern you can surely do that and along with that previous year papers is very important go and check them all right so with that uh, i'm concluding my session all the best for your exam from pearson team and if you have any query or question do write back to us on mindsights.support@pearson.com thank you